This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This recording is by Mark Smith of Simpsonville, South Carolina. Uncle Remus by Joel Chandler Harris. Chapter 29 Mr. Fox Gets Into Serious Business. It turned out one time, said Uncle Remus, grinding some crumbs of tobacco between the palms of his hands, preparatory to enjoying his usual smoke after supper. It turned out one time that Br'er Rabbit make so free with the man's collared patch that the man he took and sought a trap for old Br'er Rabbit. Which man was that, Uncle Remus? asked the little boy. Just a man, honey. That's all. That's all I knows. Dis one of these year mans what you see trollopin' round every day. Nobody ain't never year what his name is. And if they did, they kept the news mighty close for me. If this year man is believed fur to have a name, then I'm done, cause you had to go further to me. If you believe to know more than I does, then you'll had to hunt up some of these year niggers what sprung up since I commenced fur to ship my hair. Well, I just thought, Uncle Remus, said the little boy, in a tone remarkable for self-deprecation, that the man had a name. To be sure, replied the old man, with unction, puffing away at his pipe. Course. Dat what make I say what a does. Dis year man might a had a name. Then again he mightn't. He might a been named Slipshop Sam. He might a been named Old One-Eye Riley, which if twas ain't been handed round to me. But dis year man, he in the tail, and what we going to do with him? That's the point, cause when I get to hunting round among my members at a dis year Mr. What you may call him's name, she ain't dar. Now then, let's just call him Mr. Man and let him go with that. The silence of the little boy gave consent. One time, said Uncle Remus, carefully taking up the thread of the story where it had been dropped. It turned out that Br'er Rabbit been making so free with Mr. Man's greens and truck, that Mr. Man, he took and sought a trap for old Br'er Rabbit. And Br'er Rabbit, he's so greedy that he took and walked right spang in it, for he know hisself. Well, t'wa'n't long for here come Mr. Man, bruising round, and he ain't no sooner see old Br'er Rabbit than he smack his hands together and holler out, "You a nice fella, you is. You been gobbling up my green truck, and now you trying for to tote off my trap. You a mighty nice chap, that's what you is. But now that I got you, I just about settle with you for the old and the new." And with that, Mister Man he go off, he did down in de bushes atter a handful of switches. Old Br'er Rabbit, he ain't seein' nothin', but he feelin' mighty lonesome, and he sot dar lookin' like every minute was gwine to be the next. And whilst Mr. Man was off preparing his brush broom, who should come paradin' along but Br'er Fox? Br'er Fox make a great admiration, he did, bout to fix what he find Br'er Rabbit in. But Br'er Rabbit, he make like he fit to kill himself laughing, and he up and tell Br'er Fox, he did, that Miss Meadows's folks want him to go down to the house and attendance on a wedding, and he low which he couldn't, and they low how he could, and then by and by they take and tie him dar whilst they go after the preacher, so he be dar when they come back, and mowin' that, Br'er Rabbit up and tell Br'er Fox that his chillin's mighty low with the fever, and he needs fur to go after some pills for him, and he asks Br'er Fox for to take his place and go down to Miss Meadows's and have a nice time with the gals. Br'er Fox, he in for dem kind of pranks, and twa'n't no time for Br'er Rabbit had old Br'er Fox harness up in his place, and then he make like he got to make haste and get the pills for dem sick chillins. 
Brer Rabbit want more'n out of sight, for here come Mr. Man with a handful of hickories. And when he see Brer Fox tied up dar, he look like he astonished. Hey yo, says Mr. Man, says he, you done change color, and you done got bigger, and your tail done grown out. What kind of what's his name is you anyhow? says he. Brer Fox, he stay still, and Mr. Man, he talk on. It's mighty big luck, says he, if when I catch the chap what nibble my greens, likewise I catch the fellow what gnaw my goose, says he, and with that he lit into Brer Fox wid the hickories, and the way he play rap jacket was a caution to the neighborhood. Brer Fox, he juke and he jump, and he squeal and he squall, but Mr. Man, he shower down on him, he did, like fighting a red wasp nest. The little boy laughed, and Uncle Remus supplemented this endorsement of his descriptive powers with a most infectious chuckle. <laughs> by and by, continued the old man, the switches, they got frazzle out. Mr. Man, he put out at small. And when he done got fairly out of hearing, Brer Rabbit, he showed up, he did, cause he just been hiding out in the bushes listening at the racket. He low hip mighty funny that Miss Meadows ain't come along, cause he done been down to the doctor house, and that's further than the preacher yet. Brer Rabbit make like he hurried on home, but Brer Fox, he open up, he did, and he say, "'Ah, thank you for to turn me loose, Brer Rabbit, "'and I'll be obliged, says he, "'cause you done tie me up so tight "'that it make my head swim, "'and I don't speck I'd last for to get to Miss Mattis's, says he. "'Brer Rabbit, he sot down sort of careless like, "'and begin for to scratch one ear "'like a man studying bout something. "'That's so, Brer Fox,' says he. "'You does look sort of stove up.' Look like something been uncombing your hairs, says he. Brer Fox ain't saying nothing, but Brer Rabbit he keep on talking. There ain't no bad feelings twixt us, is they, Brer Fox? Cause if they is, I ain't got no time for to be tearing round here. Brer Fox say which he don't have no unfriendliness, and with that Brer Rabbit cut Brer Fox loose just in time for to hear Mr. Man whistling up his dogs, and one went one way, and the other went another. That the end of the tale.